sit rep on the weed situation. Had to go in the bush. There's a line of trees here, but there's a fence that stops you. So, I'm really busy. Uh, so, I don't know if you can see, but this is mental. This is absolutely beyond words. I, I don't know how I'm moving. I, I can't put into words how bad I feel. <sighs> Never again. Never again. Ten weeks ago, I ran a 55k ultra marathon through London in a heat wave. That video is on my channel. I stopped at a co-op and bought some Wolfton Lucas Aid. It's just too hot. Three days ago was the hottest day of the whole year. I'm making this video in September, only three days after attempting to run my first 100k ultra marathon, again through London, in another bloody heat wave. Another heat wave in September. You couldn't make this up. I like drama in my videos, it sometimes makes it entertaining. But saying this video is dramatic doesn't do justice to how hard this event was. This will be my first time trying to run 100k. The Thames Path Challenge starts near Putney Bridge and it weaves its way to Henley, running along the footpaths and trails of the River Thames. It sounds really romantic, enjoyable even, but when the ball of gas in the sky is literally trying to cook you alive and your heart rate is at maximum capacity, just trying to regulate your body temperature, it's not as fun as it sounds. I've physically covered 100K twice before. The first time was over two days when I slowly walked Race to the Stones 100K in a weekend, camping overnight. So 50K day one, 50K day two. It took me close to 30 hours of movement to complete it. And then the second time was my own backyard ultra, which I called Walk the Line, during the pandemic when all events were cancelled. Both of these videos are on my channel. <laughs> I've been wanting to attempt a 100k distance event running for a while now and the Thames Path Ultra seemed like the perfect one to take on as I progress from walking one to running one. The Thames Path is flat and the paths are reasonably easy to navigate. There's no tactical trails, that sort of thing. And I wanted to complete it running, or at least start running and then progress to run walking whilst maintaining a good pace. Okay, guys. So I set my Garmin watch up to manage a negative split and I set it to get me to the finish line in just 16 hours. 16 hours is a really, really challenging target. It's the before the start line target. I eventually managed to slip into the start line on time. And to anybody who's doing their first, their last, the 10th, the 20th, good luck. You've got this. So we just started. We're about 400 metres into the run. And uh, running over Putney Bridge. There's the Thames. Looking forward to this. Stressful start on the start line. Baggage queue was huge. We're good. It was a bit of a rush start to catch my wave. Otherwise, I'd have actually started 30 minutes later, which luckily for me, thankfully, there were some people in front of me in the baggage queue that didn't mind me pushing in. So, we started. This is the best part where the nerves kind of calm down and you get into the into your stride, you get into the run itself and things become more enjoyable. And the first 4K was uneventful. Okay. okay, all good. So, tactics, tic tacs for today. Drink every 15 minutes, the temperature is gonna be in the 30s today. Uh, expected 32 degrees Celsius, but it will feel warmer because there's not a lot of breeze. Luckily I'm on the Thames, so there should be some breeze, hopefully, fingers crossed. But the weather forecast is next to no wind. Um, so it's gonna feel warm. I just wanna say for my own egotistical reasons, the people that are running past me, I'm not over enthusiastic 100k as there. People just out for a jog along the Thames. So, 3k down. I haven't got 100k anymore. Happy days. 
I'm trying to drink, but I'm bursting to go to the toilet. And there isn't one till 17k. Well, that's the first pit stop, so I'm hoping I come across one. If not, it'll have to be a tree. Other than needing a runner's wee due to the excessive hydrating I've been doing for the past 24 hours straight, everything was going to plan until this happened. We're between four and 5k. Sit rep on the wee situation. Had to go in the bush. There's a line of trees here, but there's a fence that stops you. So, really busy. Uh, so Sunglasses. So right, I'll do that at least five times in the run. Okay. Cheers. Thank you. You're all right. Yeah, I'm all good. I'm always falling over. Thank you. The fault at the time didn't hurt. The only thing broken was my pride. I got back up and kept going because I had another 600 runners behind me and it was embarrassing. It was only later that I'd realized I'd taken a really bad whack to my arm, which had started to swell up and the area was slowly turning black and blue. I had a, a golf ball lump. I've still got it now on my arm. My arm stiffened up. It hurt to use it and there was nothing I could do about it. So I popped some ibuprofen and I kept going. My arm would turn out to be the least of my worries on this run, uh, as you will see later in this video. Short runs. A short run to my own. Yeah. Then I bumped into another runner. His name was Andre, who was also running his first 100K. And to cut a long story short, we eventually ended up running together as we both had the same goal of finishing in a reasonable time and we had a really similar pace. Hang on, let, Hello. Hang on, let it start. There yeah. we go. What was your name again? Andre. Andre. Andre Benjamin. Yeah, man. So hey. Andre's going to do it in sub 10 hours today. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not at all. Not at all. Just going to finish. Just going to finish. Today, that's all. He's, he's just slowed down so as he can help me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that, but no, no, no. It's nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you nice too, to meet, man. Yeah. Nice to meet you too, man. Awesome. Andre's a top guy, and it's awesome that you get to meet such like-minded people at events like this. It takes a certain type of human being to want to attempt something like this, and you realise how awe-inspiring their attitude to life really is. It's not the atypical outlook. It's not the attitude you get from chatting to someone in a queue in Greg's. It's very different. So we're just coming into Richmond town centre. Really sunny today. Just need to make sure we drink plenty of water. Uh, hydrate, lots of electrolytes, and maintain a sensible pace, which we're doing. The pace at the moment, we're doing 7.44 a kilometre. So, and we've done that pretty much between 7.30 and 8, pretty much for the whole 15k so far. Hiya. Yeah. Cool. Just mind the trip hazards here, please, lads. Thank you very much. Cheers, well my man. Thank you. Tactic here. I'm not going to spend any time, right. just right. refill water, yeah. get going. Uh, just about to leave pit stop, got some electrolytes in this one, plain water and then plain water in the bladder. Nearly two litres of plain water, 500 millilitres of electrolytes. That will see me to the next pit stop. Next pit stop is in 13k. Let's do this. I over-indexed on water in fact. I made sure I stay well hydrated. I was carrying almost three litres with me but the sun was really starting to have an impact on me now. I physically couldn't drink any more. Okay. I feel like it's a good time to do a sit rep. Uh, 25K down, quarter of the way through. Uh, only 75K left to go. Feel good, we've only got a few K until the next pit stop. It's in the 30s now, easily. Um, it's a warm, warm day. Uh, and it's very tempting to jump in the Thames. <laughs> swim the rest. It's probably easier to swim the rest. Really pretty. Wives, you say? Yeah, he had six wives. Henry VIII, and he's six wives. Right? Yeah, he beheaded two of them. Oh, <laughs> you not heard the story of Henry VIII? No, I didn't. Ah. At this point in the run, fully aware how much the sun had the potential to affect me, I decided to run the sections in the shade and walk sections that were in the sun. And it is, it feels yeah, hot. this is brutal. There's no wind, yeah, is there? Yeah. Uh, we were just discussing, it's absolutely brutal today. So the temperature is easily in the 30s. Um, it's just beating down. It's nearly midday and uh, there's no breeze, none, you know, completely no air. And uh, we've made the decision that 
these exposed parts along the Thames. It's all in the open. We're going to walk in the sun and jog, run in the uh, in the shade. But our pace is still really good. I mean, even walking at this pace, we're walking at a march pace. So running the shady sections and walking the parts in direct sunlight made sense. And this turned out to be 100% the right decision later on in the race. If I hadn't have done this tactic at this point, I, I'm not 100% sure I'd have been finishing this race. Sit rep, still feeling fresh, as fresh as you can be at 27, 28K. Checkpoint two, I'm gonna fill up my water, replenish electrolytes, get the hell out of Dodge, keep going. I spent next to no time in this pit stop. I refilled my water bottles and then I left. On hindsight, this was a mistake. I should have eaten something. I should have spent another five, 10 minutes, had something to eat and built up some energy. Between here and the halfway pit stop is where the wheels really started to fall off for me. This was the worst part of the race out of the whole 100K. With the direct sunshine and temperature, I started to experience the effects of heat stroke. I started to feel very dizzy and very nauseous. I'm just worried about overheating. So tactically now I am running the shady bits and trying to walk the sunny bits but the problem is it's been all sun so that plan is kind of going out the window because i don't want to be walking at this point 37 k aid station uh we've made it easy easy peasy yeah refill easy. water <sighs> i'm leaving the aid station 12k until we hit the 50k mark and I can have something to eat. So I'm gonna enjoy this. Eating this ice cream was a mistake. It felt good to eat it, but it sent my already nauseous stomach into free fall. It was doing somersaults. And there were parts over the next 10k where I couldn't even sip my water without worrying I was about to throw it back up. I'm not worried about throwing up on, on, on a run, I've done it before. I just didn't wanna have the dehydration that comes from being sick. And it's no exaggeration when I say that I was in a bad way. How do I feel? So I've managed to eat some food, had an ice cream. However, I feel a bit dicky. My stomach's doing somersaults, which always happens, standard. And then to add to this, there were parts over the next 12K to the halfway pit stop that I thought I was genuinely gonna black out. I felt dizzy uh, and my peripheral vision at one point started to go. When this happened, I made the excuse to remove a stone from my shoe so I could sit on a bench for 60 seconds instead of hitting the deck. I genuinely thought I was gonna pass out. Luckily I didn't, but I felt dreadful. I felt awful. So, 40K, I'm now doing that annoying every 10K update. Um, <laughs> and I'm sure in about 30 or 40K, I'll be doing 5K updates. Okay, we've just hit marathon distance. God knows where I am, I'm in a field on the Thames. Just hit marathon distance in uh, six hours, 37 minutes. Slowest marathon distance I've ever run. We've got 5K, just a, just a park run. Is it, five, is it 45K? 45K. Right. Well, on my watch. Okay. Um, the markers are slightly off. The markers, okay. I'm off by about half a K at okay. the moment. Right. Um, I don't know why, but yeah, my watch says 45. Um, so yeah, just a park run until yeah. we reach the halfway mark. We're in a really pretty part of the Thames. Yeah. <sighs> I was talking myself into reaching the halfway mark where I knew I could reset myself. I just want to say, sit rep, this sun is destroying us. It is so hot. It's beating down. We've got next to no shade. Um, we're trying to drink as much as we can. But even that is now a struggle because I just feel nauseous. Uh, yeah, just looking forward to getting to the halfway point and resetting. It's so warm today, so warm. I knew that if I could reach halfway, I could have something to eat, I could drink, I could change my socks, all the things that I knew would help me. My priority at this point was not my 16 hour target anymore. My target was now just to reach the halfway point without passing out, without blacking out. I was very grateful to have reached the halfway mark. Where are you? We're just over there. 
I collected my bag and sat with my family in the shade. I felt so bad at this point, I didn't even film this bit, which is very unlike me. I just put everything I had on me on the floor. I sat down, I forced down a pot of pasta and a shul replacement meal, and I managed to consume about a thousand calories. I changed all my clothes, including my socks. I drank four cans of full fat Coke, a liter of water, and a Lucas aid. After doing all of this, within seconds, I felt a thousand times better. I felt like a new man. Word of advice to anyone looking to sign up for their first ultra, their first marathon, their first half marathon, any distance you're looking to do for the first time. Do not think that these negative feelings of exhaustion remain with you. They don't, it's fleeting, it's, it's in the moment. Of course, if you have a serious medical situation, then you should seek medical advice. But I knew that if I took some time to reset myself, eat as many calories as I could, rehydrate, get some sugars, salts, all that sort of stuff on board, then I knew I would feel better. I'm not an expert, I'm just describing myself. I'm describing what I know works for me. You have to work out what works for you. What I'm saying is that these feelings do change. Having done this, I completely turned this race around. I went from seriously worrying about making the halfway mark, let alone finishing, to knowing I would reach the finish line. Okay, we're leaving the sanctuary of the safety, sanctuary of the halfway point, 50k. We're heading out now to start the start of the next 10k to get to 60. I've had loads to eat, taken longer than anticipated. So I managed to eat pasta, crisps. So yeah, feel really good. So yeah, let's do this. Next 10k, 60k, that's, that's the next benchmark. Let's go. Then in all the confusion, I forgot to take my head torch from my bag for the next section. The next section, the next 50k, is going to be pretty much in complete darkness. I forgot my bloody head torch. So I have to run back. Oh, my girls are running it over to me. I can't believe that. And I wouldn't have got far without this. Annoyingly, I had to turn around, run back, get it and come back again. Scarlet! Thanks, baby. You zipped it up. I'm not hugging, yeah, I'm not hugging you, you're really sweaty. Right. Give me you one of them. You just put new clothes on. Boom. Boom. Love you. Love you. Oh, and I've got to run back. Oh, Bye. man. We're just pushing 60k now. We're at about 57, 58k. I've lost track. And I can't be bothered to look at my watch. Still on the Thames. Absolutely shattered. It's just the heat. Uh, my legs feel okay, my feet feel okay. Tactically... We're doing okay from with water and all the things that you would expect to have to do. Electrolytes, food, but the heat is unbearable. I'm hoping that as the sun sets, we've, we we I'm so tired. I'm starting to struggle to speak. Um, I'm hoping as the sun sets, it reinvigorates us. There was one other thing I forgot to mention as well on camera before it gets too dark. I didn't mention it at the time when I took my dive earlier, which was on camera because I was filming. Don't know if you can see that. I gave myself a nasty bump, big bruise. So that was annoying in the first 3K of a 100K run. <laughs> 63K pit stop. Thank f***ing God. Hiya. Yeah. How are we doing? Thank you. That's all right. The sun light is completely going. Probably got another 20 minutes of any form of light and then we're going to be in the pitch black. And I got my torch on. So I'm going to go to the loo. I'm just going to fill up my water and then we're gone. Let's do this. So probably can't see me. Yeah, you definitely can't see me now. GoPros aren't great for low light conditions. But yeah, the sun is pretty much almost all completely down. I'll put some more chafing cream on and I'll put some more on in the next checkpoint. The next pit stop is 77. 77K, there's a massive party over there. We're just gonna blast through this one, refill water, um, and take on some electrolytes, and eat a pizza, there's pizza, there's pizza. So yeah, 
downhill? Which one the downhill? Looking forward to the vegan pizza, which I've been reliably informed is there. Seven, eight, I can't remember. Pit stop something. We're at 78k. We've made it. So yeah, 22k left. 10k to the next checkpoint. I would say feeling okay. I feel absolutely horrendous. My feet are on fire, don't belong to me. My legs are burning, we're gonna try and run in a sec, but I can't run and talk on camera at the same time, so. 10K, let's do this. Yeah, let's go back to where we saw yeah. the arrow. Yeah. And with exhaustion starting to take effect, we ended up walking the wrong way. Okay, we've gone off course, we've lost, we're lost, we're lost in a field. Yeah. Uh, and we accidentally dragged another runner with us, obviously because we must have looked like we knew what we were doing. Luckily for us, he seemed a little bit more alert than we were, and he got us back on route quite quickly. Just hit the riverside and turn left. Up here. No, keep going straight. Yeah. I then walked through the graveyard that I'd seen a hundred times on other YouTubers' videos. Okay, we're good. Back on track. Right, 10k to the next checkpoint. Let's try that again. Yeah. <laughs> Take two. Straight, straight here, turn left. Straight here, turn left and then the batteries died on my head torch. So this was my view from now on. Okay, so annoyingly my torch is now, this is the most it's generating. I've run out of battery. Luckily for me, I'm with two other ultra marathoners whose headlights are shining the way because mine is pathetic and I could do without that. This is full on endurance mode now. My head torch then emitted just enough of a glow to allow others to see me, but not enough to light the ground in front of me. So I was now completely dependent on my friend Andre's torch and him walking in front of me. So I tripped and slipped and dragged myself to the last pit stop, the 90K pit stop. While I'm thinking about it, I also just want to say for the record that the chafing is completely unbearable. My, le my inner thighs are on fire and my legs, how they're still moving, is beyond me. Because it is a case of forcing each leg in front of the other. I don't know how I'm doing this at the moment, especially after the heat wave we had during the day. But considering how I felt going into 50K, the fact that we're now pushing 85K at this point, I'll take that, I'll take that. This has to be the toughest thing I've ever done. No, I'm going to say this is the second toughest. Race of the Stones was the toughest. Uh, okay, sit rep. Sit rep at, we're coming up to the final checkpoint before the finish. Um, so sit rep, completely broken. Nothing works and feet don't work properly. It's struggling to get my feet in front of me. And if I start running, I'm running the risk of falling over. Balance is starting to go. Waves of dizziness coming and going. Every 10, 15 minutes, I just feel an, you know, a surge of dizziness. Well, I've missed my actual target of what I was aiming for. Um, and we're not, I don't think I'm gonna get it sub 19 hours now, which is what I wanted. Um, I'm just fingers crossed for it to be sub 20 at this rate, if I'm honest. I, I, I'm past the point of wanting there to be a finish time. I'm past that. I just wanna finish. The last 10K was where the wheels well and truly fell off the bus. I was completely annihilated. I had nothing left. My feet were on fire. It felt like I was walking on red hot coals. I really struggled to be able to lift my legs and physically put my feet in front of me. Everything became a trip hazard. My muscles were on fire. My legs were hurting. I'd already resigned myself to the fact that I wouldn't hit my 16 hour target. I accepted this at 40K when I was fighting passing out, but I was still on for my sub 19 hour finish. Oh, oh my God. This is bullshit. Oh. Seemed not a good idea four months ago. Okay, you can't see me at all. We've left the checkpoint. Um, we've just gone through the 90K marker. We've got 10K, two park runs to complete this. We're showing a torch at me. I don't know if you can see, but this is mental. We're at about 92, between 92, 93K. So we've got just over 7K. And I, I just, 
I, I can't put into words how bad I feel. And just the fact that I'm still moving is a miracle. I am broken, broken. This is mental. <sighs> Never again. Never again. The last 10K put an end to that dream too. Based on how well the last 10K went, I was lucky to finish at all. It took me just as long to walk the last 10K as it did for me to run the first 25K. I am physically struggling to pick my leg muscles, my legs up high enough to put my feet down in front of me. I can't describe how bad I feel. Oh shit. Right. No, I just can't get up the hill. The muscles will... At this point in a pitch black field, we bumped into other runners staring at bright white reindeer. Where are we? I've never seen, are they white? Yeah. Wow. I said I've never seen white. No. My GoPro doesn't do this justice here, but we had just walked around a bend and caught some runners that were ahead of us. And they were staring at bright white reindeer. It was like something from a Stephen King horror movie. I genuinely thought I was hallucinating. I've never seen anything. I've never seen white reindeer up until this point in my life. And to see them at whatever o'clock in the morning um, was weird. You can't see me at all, but we've just gone through 5K. So we've just got park run distance now, three, just over three miles left. Um, my torch battery is running out, but we've just gone through the 99K. We've got less than a, than a kilometer to go. And oh, I can see Henley Town Centre. I can see the bridge we need to cross. Oh my God, we're done. I'm done. I can see the finish line, we're about 200 meters. Oh. oh my god. Come on. Oh, where's the finish line? There. This way, come on. Oh, mad. You've done it, guys. Oh. Incredible, come on. Oh. Damn it. That's it, come on. We've done it. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Oh, you have no idea. I'm pleased I'm to be here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well done, man. So good. So proud of you. Honestly, you've done so well. Well done. Sorry, hang on long enough. Cute. That's tough. That's sun. Oh, I need to sit down. And that's it, I'd done it. I was over the moon. It took me exactly 21 hours and nine minutes. Significantly more than the 16 hours that I wanted. However, I am pleased to have finished. I'm a little bit annoyed I didn't get it sub 20, which was very much on the cards. And even though I'd had a wobble at about 40K because of fighting the temperature, finishing was never in doubt. Now, this race, the Thames Path Challenge, is over 100K, but you can enter and do smaller events. You can do 50K, you can do a half marathon, marathon, you can even do smaller segments. So for the 100K continuous race that I'd entered, there were 940 participants that started the race. This is an interesting fact. 332 of them pulled out and did not finish. That's a very, very high withdrawal rate of over 35%. Imagine entering a race knowing that only 65% of people entering it will finish. Out of those 332 withdrawals, 202 pulled out at the 50K halfway mark, probably because of heat stroke or at least heat related issues. These stats really highlight how hard this event was because of the conditions during the day. I finally ranked in at 272 out of 940. I'm really proud of that. The course markers were definitely off. My Garmin said when I'd finished, I'd actually completed 102 kilometers. My target of 16 hours is still on my bucket list. And I've already signed up for next year's Thames Path 100K challenge. And I will return next year fitter, leaner, stronger and faster to smash that 16 hour target. I will do it. Hopefully the temperature then will be more September-ish and less like Mordor. It's been two days since I finished and I've almost completely recovered, which is also a good indication of how far I've come. 
which I'm really happy with. I want to say well done and a big shout out to my new friend, Andre, and thank you for your David Goggins style motivational speeches. Uh, David Goggins, you're a rookie here, first timer, congratulations. How was the heat for you? I didn't even notice it. And for anyone watching this video, please don't forget to subscribe because I will share all of my progress, tactics and training. And if you like the cut of my jib, or at least enjoy watching a big bloke fall over a lot, then yeah, hope, hopefully you'll watch some more of my videos. I now weigh 17 stone or 108 kilograms. That's still really heavy. Interestingly, when I started the race, when I hit the start line on Saturday, I was 17 stone, seven pounds. So I've lost seven pounds since Saturday. <laughs> it goes to show that it's a good way to diet. It's not, it's really not a good way to diet. That was a joke. My target weight is at least 15 stone or 100 kilograms at least. This will make the effort next year more achievable and combined with some strength training, less of an ordeal. Now this is important. If you're thinking of trying something new, if you're thinking of leaving your comfort zone and you want to get fitter or even just lose some weight, remember, remember this, that if a 17 stone ginger bearded bloke from Essex can run, then hobble 100K through blistering sunshine and then pitch darkness with no head torch, then you can run a park run or join your local gym. It's all relative. And if one person on the back of my videos decides to try something new that's outside of their comfort zone, then the hours of editing would have been worth it. That's how I started over four years ago when I weighed 30 stone, watching people inspire me on YouTube. And I never thought in less than four years, I'd be trying to run 100K in under 16 hours. This race wasn't a race against anyone running or even walking it. It was a race against myself. So I hope to see you in my next video, which will be coming very soon. I wanna say thank you for watching. And if you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button.